bonne locale, mes petits choux. Things are bizarre for me right now, but things are bizarre for everyone, it seems. I'm not entirely sure what to make of it. At one point, I was far more engaged with the idea of Donald Trump draining the swamp, and while I still have hopes, I'm a bit weirded out by the current move that he's making to put CIA Director Mike Pompeo in the seat of the Department of State, replacing Rex Tillerson, who just recently retired. There have been a few things this year that have weirded me out about Trump's decision making. And as someone who pays pretty close attention to the presidency, I can't help but wonder what happens to a president after the first year in office? Because it's not the first time I've seen this. In fact, I think it's all I've ever seen when it comes to presidencies. Let me explain what I mean. Um, for all his corruption, Bill Clinton was actually pretty on point with his goals within the fir for his first year. He wasn't nearly as mixed up in things. He was focused on his intentions of, uh, well, essentially recreating a uh, golden age in the United States. But by the time 1994 rolled around, everything started fading. Uh, George Bush, you really can't count, George W. Bush, I should say, you really can't count him as anything because his presidency was perhaps the most bizarre in recent history. Uh, he almost did nothing in his first year as president until the September 11th attacks and then suddenly kicked into gear with some of the most authoritarian processes uh, this country has seen since, well, Nixon. Obama, within his first year, was pushing for the change that he was talking about. And then after that, he was just as destructive of liberties and, well, simply put, corrupted as the rest of them. And now it's hard to see this Donald Trump that we have in the current year, current year, as the same man who was elected, you know, a year and a half ago. I don't see him fighting to drain the swamp anymore. I don't hear him talking about draining the swamp anymore. Instead, amidst embroilment with the investigations against him, which have admittedly been absolutely proven to show that he had no collusion with Russia, his administration is in constant upheaval. People are constantly having to quit, constantly having to leave. And while on the one hand, it makes me think, well, clearly this man, this man's administration, excuse me, uh, is under a lot of pressure and these people need their privacy, need a stable, you know, employment. On the other hand, it's, it's a little too much to, to ignore. I'm not saying I'm jumping off the Trump train. I'm more so describing a situation where I, I'm very curious what we're actually going to be seeing in the next six months. I mean, there's a long, long list of things that Trump has done well. For example, uh, there have been over 1,400 notable corporate and government resignations. Uh, this is completely new. And amongst those, 50 congressmen are not are resigning without seeking re-election. How do we, I mean, this is completely unheard of in a government that is 
well, unwilling to accept the very idea of, uh, the very idea of term limits for our Congress. Uh, as it was revealed recently, it wasn't Mueller, but Jeff Sessions who created those 18,000 federal indictments. And for a man who has gotten a lot of flack from Trump, that's some remarkable movement on the part of the Department of Justice, considering normally they only have a thousand per year. Uh, Saudi Arabia is in complete upheaval after repeated talks with Trump. And when the top of the Forbes wealthiest people's list used to be covered with Saudi nationals, now there's not one to be found. Instead, it's as much as I dislike most of them, um, it's American names, it's European names. You know, Jeff Bezos is now the richest man in the world. No longer is it um, a, a person whose last name has been Salman. Netanyahu is being charged with corruption. That's fascinating. Uh, human trafficking is directly under attack, which is, I mean, nothing makes me happier. For those who know my history, I am very personally connected to the concept of human trafficking as I was trafficked as a child. I was thrown away by my family and ended up in one of those schools that is meant to hold children who are going to be used for sexual trafficking. And the entire month that was dedicated to fighting human trafficking, the thousands of arrests that have been made worldwide on uh, child sex trafficking, and the amount of attention that is being caught for it is simply mind-blowing. ISIS has been nearly completely destroyed. It is now, at best, splinter cells in Europe and the Middle East that have no real central, you know, governance or forward movement. And the military is stomping them out wherever possible in Syria, as well as other locations. Um, MS-13, a gang that has been huge in the United States for so long is no longer free to just do whatever they want, no longer free to be used by the powers that be to accomplish what they don't want to get their hands dirty with themselves. And beyond all that, Trump's negotiating with North Korea albeit having gone over Rex Tillerson's head, shows that there is some good coming of this because Trump may very successfully de-escalate the supposed World War III situation and remove the nuclear threat that North Korea poses to the rest of the world. That alone is absolutely fucking stunning. But all that said, I don't see the swamp draining very much. I mean, certainly in certain ways, we're seeing a lot of the more corrupt Republicans losing their positions, choosing to retire and uh, avoiding uh, any sort of re-election campaign, instead opening their seats. But at the same time, our elections are still rigged. I mean, a 641 vote difference in Pennsylvania, of all places? That seems a little bit odd to me. And I'm pretty sure over the coming weeks, we're going to see allegations and evidence of election tampering in Pennsylvania, because Pennsylvania has already shown that there is evidence of 100,000 false voters, dead people, illegal immigrants, who have, you know, voted on the record, even though those people have no right to vote. <clears throat> but 
but if if things keep going the way they're going, I'm not sure Trump is going to be, as they say, hashtag our guy anymore. Because his pattern is no different than any other, well, almost any other president's pattern, wherein as he sinks into the seat of the office, the weight on his shoulders makes him just as much a... What's the best way to put this? You do not take power like that to act because the power, the seat, it acts upon you. It's frustrating. It's extremely frustrating to see because, I mean, at the end of the day, we're still in a position where the CIA has waged endless war following the end of World War II since their, you know, proper formation in 1949 to maintain a t strategy of tension, uh, to maintain their ongoing wars with whomever serves to be the greatest terrifying villain so that people will be demanding security, so that people will be demanding military action. And it's not just, you know, wars abroad, it's a war at home, a war for the minds, as the CIA's programs of media influence continue to transform stories. More and more evidence is coming out about the Vegas shooting right now, showing that the FBI essentially created a movie script to replace the actual narrative because there's no way to spin the narrative in a way that is politically beneficial to the FBI. We're hearing about so many events right now, and so many of these events are being ignored to instead talk about something with political strength. I mean, take Telford, for example. How is how is the Telford uh, rape gangs getting less public attention than anything else at this moment, other than the fact that there is no political war to be won there that is merely an atrocity? And atrocities, while they get views, don't win hearts and minds, at least not in the direction that hearts and minds are wished to be won by the media, the media that is controlled by the GCHQ, by the CIA, by MI6. Only time will tell if Mike Pompeo's appointment to Secretary of State will actually be good or bad. Of all the people who have ever run the CIA, I trust Mike Pompeo more, but that's not saying much because I have never trusted anyone who has run the CIA since its inception. And I have to wonder what's coming next. I'm sorry I haven't been making as many videos of recent. It's been very noisy, it's been very difficult to produce videos in a timely manner. But that's gonna change, that's going to I'm going to squeeze in more time, uh, but I'm also going to be working on different things. I'm going to be programming more. I have an I have an idea for journalism that I don't want to talk about just yet, but a project that will incentivize genuine journalism and research rather than politically oriented um, narrative spinning, simply put. And I really hope that with time I'll be able to share it with you and show you something truly amazing. But I don't want to get your hopes up by making big announcements, so instead I'm just going to say I haven't disappeared yet. I'm still here. I'm still producing videos. That's not going to change. I just don't know how to cover 
anything right now other than history. And that's why I'm doing the series that I'm working on, why I'm pouring so much of my research energy into uh, the history of crimes by the CIA and other governmental organizations within the United States. Uh, I might be making another one of those videos today, it might be tomorrow, but be on the lookout for it, and until when, bonsoir.